Good morning, pregame crew. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Hope you're doing well. I'll get started in just a few minutes. Just wanted to jump on and make sure you knew the sound is working. I'm assuming it's working. Assuming it is Wednesday, July 7th. This is Chark Al Lori. We will get started with the pregame show in just a few minutes. All right, I'm back. We still have five minutes. Hi, Mohammed, Brandon, Roger, Piero, Dragon Man, Pete Court, Widow Puppy, Chuck Z, Tammy. I can't wait to see you in the TCG room. Hey, Don, David, baby, Naresh. Naresh, did you get shopped this time? Amazon and shop were off the chain. Hey, Brett. Happy birthday, Chris. How are you? Every time I sing happy birthday in my head, I would never sing it to anyone that I care about because I have a terrible voice. But um, I think about this boss I had in Arizona. We had this really, really blonde computer girl and we were trying to teach her what the company was trying to give her uh, a job in computers. She was really interested in technology and she just was so blonde. She'd forget everything everyone would teach her. And my old boss used to say, that she would have to wake up every morning and sing happy birthday to herself to remember her name. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, Diane. Diane, that's my name. So, sorry, that just struck me as funny this morning. And if you're listening, Rosie, I don't think I have ADHD. It's so crazy how people can get behind a computer screen and be so negative. I know it appears as though I have ADHD, but look at this list. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty names in twenty minutes. If you can do technical analysis, twenty names in twenty minutes, let me know and I'll listen to your show. So I try to do my best. I promise I don't have ADHD. I try to do my best to stay succinct. But I think it's important that we stay with our format and we go around the horn where we go through the Fab Four futures. We go through the commodities. We go through crypto and then we go through technical movers and shakers. And then we end up with SPY and QQQ and key levels for the day. It may appear haphazard sometimes if you're just joining us and you're new to this format. But there is a method to the madness. Go figure. Go figure. Okay, I'm getting coffee delivery here. Thank you. All right, so I'll be more awake. We'll get started in two minutes. Hey, Madden. <laughs> Bye, Rosie. Let's make some money. Did you make any money on Badu, my head? Hey, Robert, over, I think you're in Thailand, I think. Sailing into the sunset, Jorge, Rob, Brandon. 
Thank you, thank you. Consistency is key, yes it is. Actually, I have that written down, Stephen. Are you, do you have a camera in my office? Are you looking at my notes? Look at my notes. Here's my notes for today. Consistency. It's pretty important. I always have the 20 charts that I'm going to cover, and I like to cover some trading principles on every show just to help you build up your system and get your muscles flexed. So I'm always trying to share nuggets. So I have some nuggets written down today for you. Awesome, Matt. I'm glad it works for you. You're about to enter long. Okay, well, be careful, my head. That I mean, the Chinese names are just not doing great. The Chinese government keeps shooting these Chinese names in the foot, and I just can't recommend with a good heart or a clear conscience to go long any Chinese name in this environment because they continue to just get tumbled down the hill by the government. Hey, Sue, you did message me about CALX, okay? Dragon Man, could you help me uh, remember to go over C-A-L-X for Sue? She messaged me on Twitter and I forgot to go over it. <laughs> Slow devil, you made me choke on my coffee. I'm glad you didn't get killed. Hey, random guy. Okay, it's time to get started. Hi, I'm Chart Gal Lori and I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. So we have a community with about a thousand people and we share setups and observations about the market, news, commodities, marijuana, crypto, psychedelics, you name it. We have a swing report service if you're only interested in swing trading. If you're really interested in crypto, I suggest you check out Trader Pro Alerts, which is an indicator system. It sends alerts to your phones via Telegram and it has all kinds of cool indicators that you can set up and customize. And then we have courses. We have candlestick courses, uh, entries and exits. So we cover the whole gamut of technical analysis. So I go over the Fab Four futures, commodities, cryptos, and movers and shakers for the day. We are having a bullish overall night. So here's the deal, y'all. Actually, I had not even planned on doing this, but I think I have to here on stock charts. This is something I've been going over every weekend, every single weekend on the swing report. I do the videos every weekend. So here are the 10 sectors for SPY. We have been watching XLY and XLK very closely. We have been waiting for them to go from the lagging to the improving quadrant. So as you can see, XLK, which is technology, is going into the improving quadrant. So what this is, is four quadrants. They go clockwise for the most part. Sometimes they can go counterclockwise. And we, we try in the swing report to identify names that are in the improving quadrant, crossing over into the leading quadrant so we can position ourselves early in names. So this weekend, one of our names was Amazon, and then it flew yesterday. Does that always happen? No but it was beautiful that it went up almost 5% the first day of the swing report. So we've been waiting for this moment. XLK and XLY, we're still waiting. And XLY will probably turn because the largest component of XLY is Amazon. We're waiting for these strongest sectors, which are the most heavily loaded sectors in SPY to start doing that turn this, I'm doing it with my hand and you can't see me to do this turn into improving and that's really going to propel the market even further up. Now, could we get consolidation tomorrow and stay in consolidation the rest of the year? Absolutely. Let's look at seasonality. This is part of stock charts, so you can type in here on charts and tools. You can go to seasonality. You can type in your symbol. So with Apple, 100% of the time, the last, so 2017, 18, 19, 20, so the last five years, well, four years, Apple has closed higher than when it opened at the beginning of the month. So seasonality, it's pretty cool to look, look at these, Microsoft. So we're in a look at Microsoft closes higher than what it opens typically a lot of months out of the year, but we are overall in a bullish season. So with ES, your key support, 433725, 433625. So we hit 434550 this morning. We $2.50 from the all-time high established last week. So let's look at the hourly and let's compare all four. So of course, NASDAQ is the strongest, hitting a new all-time high this morning. 
YM not so much. So we are we're pulling back. We went over this three four five one three by eight dollars. We broke it by eight dollars, and now we're pulling back pretty hard. RTY same thing, very weak. So NASDAQ is definitely doing the heavy lifting for the market this morning. So what does that mean? As long as NASDAQ is pulling harder, don't short NASDAQ names. Go with the trend, go long NASDAQ. If you wanna short something, go find something in the Dow, something in IWM to short. So NASDAQ support, next support is 14852, 148285, and 14823. 25YM. We just broke this resistance, so let's start over with support and resistance. 34521 is your resistance. Then after that, it's way up at 34699. So on any pullback, the most important support for today will be the low of yesterday, where we had those quick 30 minutes of fear. Did I say July? Yeah, sorry. Uh, was the fear that we had yesterday for about 30 minutes. That low becomes the important low of today. So yesterday's low in NASDAQ, 1462525, that becomes the key level, but we're pretty far away from it. We may not come down and test that today. So RTY, we're losing these supports. Let's start over and get you some more levels. We lost that one. Did we lose that one? No. 226270, 2249.90. Resistant 2274, and then 2277. So that's our top four Fab Four futures. I have semiconductors here because I just want to mention semiconductors. Dan mentioned in the video yesterday, this is a messy daily bull flag. This is not what you want to see, but it's still a potential daily bull flag nonetheless. We want to see decreasing bear volume here. But if this were to get going and get over 26249, I mentioned last week, which that's our all time high, 26249, I mentioned that if semiconductors are behind the move in NASDAQ, it can really light fuel to the fire. So I'm watching SMH for if it were to get over 262.10, odds favor a lower high compared to 262.10, come get that higher low and then go back up and test the all time high. But I'm watching semiconductors as a clue for overall market fuel. So market fuel, and, and pardon the pun, if oil were to start bouncing to the bullish side, now oil's been bullish for months and market hasn't necessarily correlated one for one, but oil going up, semiconductors going up, and technology going up, then we have got all the makings of a pretty decent rally. GC. All right. Yep, your spy chart's not looking that great. Nope, not looking that great right now. So with gold, we had a nice bounce this morning. We are losing... Okay, I'm going to start over on support and resistance. I draw these so early in the morning and then they're not valid by the time I start the show. We have resistance at 1810.20, then support 1805.70, 1803.60. So we had this great move yesterday. We started out the day we were talking about this move on gold. And then it just gave it all back. This was a great move and it gave it all back. So let's see if the bears step back in around 1813 or 1815 on gold. Oil's pulling back pretty hard. It is Wednesday. So we have oil inventory at 1030 Eastern. Please don't forget about that. We had some more OPEC news this morning. It looks like we're attempting to hold the 72.94. We hit 72.88, so we broke it by six cents and bounced. However, don't disregard this bear volume. So below 72.88, your next support 72.82 and 72.71. Your resistance shorter term time frame 73.82, then up at 74.86. Bitcoin. We have this tightening range. constantly having to adjust it. So we have resistance up at 35,000 and 35,100 support, 34,473 and then 33,650. If, and I said if, this were at the top of a pole. 
So typically you have a cup and handle pattern comes at the top of a bullish rally and then you have a cup and handle and then you have a continuation pattern and you just keep going up. So this is not an ideal area to have a cup and handle, but it was a nice base established, rounded bottom of bulls buying the dip and now the bulls are attempting to get over 35,100. Ethereum looks better. So Ethereum key resistance 241119 support 2365 and 2362 44. So this is actually a little bit more of a, a healthier round base and I'm not going to call it a cup and handle again because it's just not ideal but we did have this round base break out. So I do have these over here I wanted to show you SPY. Um, this was supposed to be QQQ. So if you are struggling finding a system let me show you a system that you can adopt today and it will help you become a better trader. Or I shouldn't say a better trader because there's so many components in becoming a good trader. So the low on Friday, let me go back here. The low on Friday was 35628. Yesterday we hit 35649. So we came within 21 cents of Friday's low. So do you see how this hour, this higher low here compared to 356.28, the low of Friday, you could have bottom fished this, waited for a two minute higher high, higher low, entered on that two minute higher high and then put your stop below that two minute higher low. Lower risk entry, SPY, same thing, double top. So Friday we had a high over here of 434.10. Yesterday we hit 434.01. You could top fish this 434.10, give it like 10 cents wiggle room, top fish that and look $4 to the downside. So aiming for those double tops, double bottoms can get, are higher risk reward scenarios because you're so close to your stop. So typically when I mentor someone, this is the first setup that I guide them to is looking for double tops and double bottoms to reduce your risk. So let's look at it on DIA. Look at this, DIA, 248.11, Friday's high, excuse me, 348.11, Friday's high, 348.29. Look over here. I mean, I could show you time and time again where we have these double tops and double bottoms, and you're gonna have lower risk shorts and lower risk longs if you wait and go for those. Uh, IWM, we have this weekly, you can really see it on the weekly. Come on. We have this weekly triple top, 233.64, 233.35, 233 233.41. You could have shorted this every single time it tested it and got dollars to the downside. And when I say dollars to the downside, do you know for SPX, if you're trading an SPX option, this is six, 700% to the downside. So it, it is the simplest way to approach trading as far as a system that gets you close to your entry. So that made me type out what are the top 10 commandments that just off the top of my head today that I like to teach students when I'm mentoring? Don't go counter trend. That is rule number one for a newer trader. When you get experience, then yes, go counter trend. Be a, be a goat. Like Dan is the greatest of all time in oversold bounces. He knows how to do that, but that's going counter trend. That takes experience. That takes an eye of watching the level two and just really looking at candlestick shapes. I encourage you, don't go counter trend. Second thing, trade both ways. This was very difficult for me at the beginning. If it's not difficult for you, congratulations. You're way better than me. It was hard for me to trade both ways. I only wanted to trade bullish trade both ways. You must be able to trade long and short in order to be a successful trader. Ensure your stop is close to your entry. So that's going back and doing these double tops, double bottoms, which I love. I love those because that means your stop is close by to your entry. Trade less, trade a lot less. Reduce the number of indicators you're looking at. And y'all have heard me say some of these things before, but I think redundancy is good too. Reduce the number of charts you're looking at. Stay away from options if you have discipline issues and stay away from futures too. They will wreck you if you don't have discipline. Reduce the amount of noise you listen to. If you're listening to CNBC and it distracts you, turn it off. If you're listening to 50 people on Twitter, turn it off. Consistency and discipline are more important than technical prowess. 
It is way more important to be consistent and disciplined than it is for you to be able to identify a higher high and a higher low. Yes, I said it. That's almost sacrilegious being a TCG disciple, but it is extremely important that you're consistent and you have discipline. And then when you have a win, act like you've been there before. We have a very sports oriented family and it's something my husband tells my kids and me all the time. Act like you've been there before. Don't get crazy high-fiving everybody, screaming and being boisterous. Just take the wins and the losses in stride. And then this doesn't fit with my nicely neat 10, but I still had to write it. Had to write it out. Have conviction. Stand for something or you'll fall for anything. But hold on to those convictions loosely. Be ready to be wrong. But it's really important for us to flex our discipline muscles. William O'Neill, he wrote a book. He founded IBD and on swing trading and he's like one of the forefathers forefront of swing trading and one of the things that he did is he held Amgen for years 100% of his account was in Amgen I'm not recommending you do that but do you know how many days he had to wake up to Amazon doing something like it did yesterday and he's not in it he's sitting there in Amgen and maybe Amgen AMGN is pulling back but that it that's conviction you really have to have some strong conviction in order to trade well. And then that conviction, be ready to be wrong. And when data tells you you're wrong, then back off that idea. All right, so that are those are my tips for today. Apple, Apple, we talked about it this yesterday, how this chart is beautiful. Now, we are so close to 145.09. What am I going to say it's going to do? Typically, when you, not all the time, but typically when you get this close to an all-time high, it sucks you into it. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It acts like a magnet. We are only $2 away. I'd be shocked if Apple got this close and didn't at least tag the all-time high. We talked about yesterday how this was a beautiful chart. It gave back a ton when QQQ was pulling back. Amazon did not. Amazon stayed pretty strong and then got news at that key juncture in the bull flag and then had continuation. So Apple looks wonderful. 143.15 is yesterday's high. We got a double top at that area right now and that all-time high, 145.09. Apple looks great. Amazon, man, i am been a Bible thumper on this one and I'm going to just keep thumping that Bible. So over here, when I look at the monthly, and if I go over, I go over. Uh, Denzi will, not Denzi, sorry, today is Dan's day. Dan will be live in 15 minutes. I will be done by then, but I'm not going to rush over this chart to get to the other names. So last night, let's talk about conviction. Y'all know I have very high conviction on this Amazon trade. So when we broke bull, in April of 2020 from this base breakout, this Starvis box, we went approximately 73% in one, two, three, four, five months. Five months, 73%. Why would this be any different? Well, the market could pull back. We could have a COVID dump in the middle of this, sure. We could have a Delta variant, whatever, a bat disease, whatever it may be. But as it stands, I have data. So if I'm a researcher, I and I, I had quantitative business analysis in college, lots of it. So if we're looking at statistics and we're doing research on data, this base breakout that consolidated from August of 2018 to May of 2020, it yielded 73% in five months. What would make this any different? And I'm going to trade this accordingly. Am I going to put my whole account in this? No. Will I put 5% of my swing account? Most likely, I have 5% already in it. I may go up to 10%, my conviction's that high. But if you don't think during this process of five months, we could go drill into this monthly chart and we're gonna see hourly oversold, four hour oversold, it pulled back. We're gonna have opportunities to get in. So if you're not in, you don't have to go chasing up here. It's gonna give you opportunities. And those opportunities are gonna be discount buying. It's gonna be on clearance and you're gonna to have to remind yourself of that. So I still have my five minute alert set for five minute oversold. I will day trade that. I will also day trade a 15 minute oversold. I will day trade an hourly oversold. Amazon looks absolutely gorgeous and I'm gonna be long until it tells me not to. 36.75 and 36.67 are your next supports. ABBV. Okay, so if you're not a Swing Report member, I'm going to give you a name from this past weekend's report. In addition to Amazon, we had 
ABBV. We have a monthly, excuse me, a daily squeeze going on and we have a dividend coming up. I just want to point out of $1.30, uh, July 14th, I believe is the recording date. And then you would be paid on August 16th. As always, please go confirm that data on your own. But I am looking at getting a position in ABBV and positioning myself for this dividend. I don't typically trade dividends, but I am becoming a little more dividend focused. I'm having to do this for my parents' sake. So I am studying it a lot and I will be watching for an entry in ABBV for a swing entry. And if it comes back and loses the 8 and 21 EMA or the 50 EMA on the daily, I am wrong, okay? And that's okay. So this is a bullish chart and it has a dividend that I'm after. AVGO, AVGO, if the market's going crazy, I'm not gonna be short in this. I don't like pain. I don't, I don't hate my money. So for AVGO, they had some really bad news about a lawsuit on Friday. So if the market were to get weak and we'd come up and test 466, excuse me, 476.75, I would top fish this and I would be wrong over 477. So I'd give it 25 cents wiggle room, okay? 25 cents wiggle room and this hourly EQ, I would top fish AVGO up into 477 if the market pulls back. This is a king of the mountain setup. So Amazon's a king of the mountain setup long, Apple's a king of the mountain setup long, AVG, AVGO is a king of the mountain short if the market is weak. Baba, if, if Baba pulls up into 218, it is a king of the mountain short. Look at this hourly EMA bonking it on the head. Until it can get over these hourly EMAs, I mean, this is a short. Yes, it'll get some bounces going. Yes, it could rip some faces off, but that's a four-hour bear flag if I've ever seen one. So Baba, bearish. I don't like it. We're getting oversold on different time frames, but bounces are for shortened until proven otherwise. Big C. Big C with some Amazon news this morning. This chart actually looks pretty good. I love these tightening ranges, and then we get these squeezes, and oh, we have news. Ha, huh? who knew? Big C looks good on a pullback. I would be looking Big C long. Big C long. MRN, M-R-I-N. We have the weekly uh, RSI is up at 96. This is a top fish. Careful, careful, careful. So I want you, I want you to look at the character of this chart. Look how it broke this hourly support. Look how it broke this hourly support. It's breaking this hourly support. Is this going to be different? Because it could still come back up and rip your face off. So please be if you're experienced with this, then have at it. 2550. If it were to bounce up to there, which I doubt we get we are that lucky but we're already oversold on the 15 minutes so i would be looking for a push up into the 8 and 21 ema downtrending ema to short i'd be looking to short mri and shop 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 if you're a tcg member i drawn on and on about how much i love this trampoline setup yesterday i posted it around here if you're a tcg member you can verify that this is about where i posted it which is typically not where i like to post things on a higher time frame when we've got these downtrending on shorter time frames it gave so much back lori what are you doing and it closed up at the high of day stay on those larger time frames to get your conviction really drilled in and flex that muscle shop looks beautiful and talk about a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you don't think we're not going to get so close to 1552.23 and go tag it. I mean, we're right, we're right there. It's gonna, it acts as a magnet. Tesla, I have on here because so many of y'all are interested in it. I have no interest in Tesla. Zero. It is it's hella weak compared to the market. Yes, the market was pulling back during this time, but we had Amazon and Apple up here really doing beautiful things and Tesla's just dumping. So I don't like Tesla here. Uh, let me give you some levels. I shouldn't be so judgmental. You have resistance at 665, 66750, 684, support 65610, 65377, 65140. Oh, no problem. Okay, laser. Uh, Shopify is beautiful. Yes. Okay, so SPY. Here are your levels. 43396, 43401. I'm just going to call them out to y'all, okay? 
433-96-43401-43410. Support, 432-66-43206. And 430-01, yesterday's low is that key low. So I promise Sue, C-A-L-X. I looked at it when you tweeted about it yesterday, Sue. I, I didn't see it. We rejected here yesterday with a double top, $49 and $48.97. We're holding the daily EMAs. That's good, but that thing gave up way too much. Odds favor, we stay within this range today. That's a very large range. Odds favor an inside bar today. Got to hold 4607 below that. You're in no, no man's land down to 4381. I think you wanted BX. I read that BX is one of the largest uh, landlords in the United States. And I was looking at this chart the other day. That was some serious bear volume. But this sucker's in a daily uptrend until it isn't. So 96.77 broke yesterday. 96.54 is that new key support. And below that, 95.57. This weekly chart may need some consolidation. But right now, it's just a weekly bull flag. Okay, what else did y'all want? Laser. Got a few minutes. Laser, hourly 50 MA is giving it a headache. Headache, headache, headache. These type of names, you know what always happens is news comes out and it makes them pop and then drop. So I 2172 stands out and then 2271. Yesterday's low, 2029 is the key support. Hourly is bearish until it isn't. All right. Bitcoin is breaking out. Yeah, that Bitcoin looked good, Robert. I really liked it. And I think you posted about KSM, didn't you? Um, KSM, you, was that it? I think that's what you posted about yesterday. Yeah, you posted this. So Rob posted in Crypto Alts this squeeze and then a trade review. It was just a beautiful breakout. He was watching this squeeze and it posted. It posted. It broke to the bullish side on volume. That's it for me. Uh, TCGers, head on over to the room and listen to Dan the Man. Thank y'all for joining me. I love y'all and I really enjoy hanging out with y'all. I hope I helped you somehow. If I did, please hit that thumbs up and tell a friend. Bring a friend. Let's play the telephone game, but the good kind of telephone game. All right. Thanks, Beefcake. Thanks, Muhammad. Thanks, Robert Mack. Oh, cat. Okay, I'm going to do... Shoot. Y'all always wrote me into this. Cat, I'm not going to like cat because the Dow is down. So we have a daily downtrend on cat. Weekly, this could be a weekly bear flag. We broke this inside bar to the downside. Your key support to below yesterday's low, 211.34 is 205.50. I don't like it. And on any bounce, we're looking for lower highs. Don't like it. And what was the other one? Goog. I use Google L, so I'm just going to go, I mean, what you, what you want. What you want. That's a beautiful chart. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right, that's it. Bye, y'all.